you for inviting me to be a part of your session and um i'm happy to be here to just contribute to whatever discussions that are of interest so as you rightly said my name is amaka and i'm currently I'm a PhD candidate in Texas A&M University in the United States. So I'm doing my PhD, trying to get my doctorate degree. And on the side, I do a lot of um, public speaking and outreach and just motivational for the younger generation. And I also do lots of um, mentoring for students, especially students who are trying to come to the United States on scholarship for graduate school. So I do mentor them and provide resources for them just to make it easier for them to come and um basically yeah that's that's it about me. in public speaking you we must be a, a very concise and precise in a way right right yeah. right so uh, yeah and i think yeah that's that's another important point that whenever you take up a topic like you are inviting somebody now we are talking more generalistic right but if you are like give a topic to somebody to say this is what you need to speak on you have to be able to find the pillars of that topic so that you can go from simple to complex right it's very important to go in that flow where it's like you are bringing your audience on like okay i'm talking about now what i want to talk about is this particular topic this is the definition of this thing this is what it means these are examples of situation where it happens. So it goes in that order. And then another important thing, which is something that people struggle with, is time. time. So that is where the practice comes in, right? That's where practice comes in. If you are going to do like a public speaking and you've been given 15 minutes, you want to finish your delivery in that time, at least one minute before. And you want to finish it comfortably. You don't want to get to a point where it's like, oh, the main juice, I haven't gotten to it and my time is up. You know, you get so worked up. So that is where the practice comes in that like, okay, how many minutes do I have? What do you want me to talk about? I can take my time to, you know, think about something and we, I, that way I streamline it. And I know that within a 10 minutes time frame, I've said what I need to say. I have delivered my punchline. I have made all my delivery. You get all my points within that time. You need so to like keep things. Uh, it is very crucial to be and to follow the deadline, right? We, we yes. We must convey a, a, our message to a specific deadline. Right. It is very important because there is no there is no talk that is that has endless deadline, right? Mm -hmm. There's no right. um there's no conversation that you're going to have that would be talk, talk until you get endlessly. tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, endlessly. It's never going to be like that. It, mm -hmm. it has to be like defined. Oh, we are talking for 20 minutes. Your talk is 30 minutes. Your talk. So you need to be conscious of that, even while you are preparing your materials. If it's a talk that requires uh, maybe slides, you have to you want to look at your transition because that's another important thing. If you have to give a presentation, like for most big and formal conferences, you give a presentation with slides, right? So you prepare your PowerPoint slides most of the time. So you, you may not just necessarily be, be talking. Maybe you are showing images to people. You have something on your PowerPoint. So you have to also calculate how many minutes does it take you or like how many seconds to go from one slide to the next slide. By the rule of thumb, people would always suggest that spend at least one minute on one slide. So for example, if you have 10 minutes to talk, don't have more than eight to 10 slides. Don't have too many slides such that you are flipping, 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 and people don't, do you understand? People don't have the time to actually absorb what you've shown them. Do you get that? And so you're supposed to like come to a slide, even if it is just one image on that slide, and you want your slide to be very scanty and catchy. You don't want it to be so wordy. People, nobody wants to read what you have written on the slide. You are the delivery master. You are the one talking. So right. your slide should just be about showing a very bold image, you know, something that is just clear. And then you can stand there and then explain, you know, like, oh, okay, this is what this means. This is this is what I'm trying to get out of this slide. So you have enough time to explain that. Then you transition to the next slide smoothly. And so you always have like, what is your transi uh, transitioning um, statements? What connects slide one to slide two? slide three what is the connection between them because it cannot be all disjointed they have to be like sequential like you're going from here this one ends here the next slide somehow connects to what you said and it connects and you're taking people on that journey and it becomes easier when you when you do all of that so when it comes to public speaking there's really a lot of components and a lot of pieces to it when i coach people i always ask them okay what do you want to do what's your end goal so that we know where we start because some public speaking, it could just be like being invited to like a podcast now and you're just talking. Yeah. I don't have a slide. I don't have to read anything or rehearse anything. I just need to be able to respond to your question. Yeah. Is that what you want to do for your public speaking? Is it like being invited to sets and maybe shows and things yeah. like that? Or are you trying to learn public speaking in a more 
define okay. setting where you have to maybe go to conferences and present with slides is totally different again. So it has to be like, what's what's the end goal? That determines where you start. You know, it determines where you start in your journey. And like I said, you don't get you don't get flawless overnight. You it's gradual, like you gradually build on it and you build on it and you get more more yeah. comfortable to just you know just stop right. for a quick chat you know like let's have a coffee chat and yeah let's start let's let's talk about it and yeah. people can get value from what you are saying without nice. you scripting or thinking too hard like you know i came on this show and i didn't even know what you were going to ask really to be rude but how do we get him so those are some mistakes that people make and they can even make it in when it is so important like in corporate setting let's say you are really trying to get a serious job you don't want to come there and begin to overshare. Oh, I went to the market and I came back and I bought this and I bought that. And you just keep rambling, rambling. And the people are like, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, so it's it's important for you to be able to find that balance to give the required information in a clear and a concise way that right. it's, you know, somebody gets the message. I want to talk to you and leave you with something. I want you to at least remember something from what I said. People attention span is becoming shorter and shorter by the day. So right. you need to be able to have your delivery like on the point. This is what I'm saying. This is the point. This is the point. Bam, bam, bam. You get you get it. You you're able to like keep thinking about it even as you leave. You remember, oh, she said this, she said that. So that is that is kind of um if you really want to be an inspirational public speaker, those are some of the goals you want to you want to really go right. for. It's it's very right. important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I will encapsulate it, so all I can uh, conclude from uh, the conversation we have had so far is we must be confined to the central theme of our message. That what exactly we are trying to express to the audience, right? We right. must be confined to that central theme. And then uh, mm -hmm. we need to uh, turn it out as a five point. And then in five points, uh, we, we, we just have to set a deadline a time day, a duration and that in on that limited duration we will deliver that message whatever mm -hmm. we are in, you know intended to deliver so time management becomes right. very crucial in, in public speaking time management i would say is central i would say it's like at the core at the center of everything when it comes to public speaking how you manage your time how you um how much time you spend emphasizing a particular thing Right. Because there are things I want to mm -hmm. emphasize. I really want you. I want to emphasize it. So, how much time do I give to it? How does it affect the next thing? So, it's yeah. it's very very important to have that you know that transition. So, in order to really um, yeah. get it across. So, Amata, ma'am, I would like to navigate uh, towards the next question, which is how to handle stress. Because in these days, because of social media and mm -hmm. lots of personal issues, you know, you know, stress is getting very higher you know thing in people's problem it, it is becoming right. very you know huge problem for for people to pop up with so mm -hmm. share just three four practical insights in regard okay. to stress and handling stress handling you know emotions how, how we can handle you know emotions relations right well. yeah so. okay yeah that's a very um it's a very critical question and uh as you Inherited as you well. rightly said yeah. yes as you rightly said um these days, there is a lot of stress mm -hmm. and social media makes it even worse because especially for the younger generation, right? Because my passion, I'm, I'm really passionate about the younger generation because I feel like the future, they are the future, right? So people who are still coming up, they're in their early 20s, you know, 20s, they're going into college, they're graduating from college, they're looking for the next best thing. That, that's the future of the world, literally, not of any particular country. So, right. and... Um, unfortunately, these Gen Zs, as we want to call them, right, these, you know, Gen Z folks, they are born into a time where they don't know how to survive with social media. At least when I was born, it was not common to have handphones and handsets. It, it, eventually, when I was young, it became a thing and, you know, and then people started having it. But at least I lived through a time even during my teenage years where it was OK not to have a phone and check a tweet or check a LinkedIn or check a Facebook. It was it was OK. So, you know, it, but you have the people who were born from maybe 2000, 2001, 1999, depending on the country. And mm -hmm. they were born, literally born into distress. They have this rat race. They have this chase and the need for all of this validation. There is this validation. Oh, what's the new trendy thing? What's the new, you know, what's the new clothes? What's the new raining thing? What's the new phone? And mm -hmm. all of these pressures. 
like you said, it is not easy to manage. It's not something mm -hmm. that you say, oh, this is the this is the outline. You do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you're fine. If I said that to you, that would that would be a lie. It's it takes a combination of emotional awareness, first and foremost. That is where the key thing when I would uh, the key important practical thing that I would say is good for managing stress is having good mentors and coaches. That's one critical for me. I feel like that is very important. And like I said, especially for those who are coming up, sometimes it's important to be able to talk about how you're feeling. Mm. Just let somebody hear you. Just talk about it. Talk about it with somebody you trust. That way you can get a different perspective. Because sometimes we are, so we are too far in our own mindset mm. that we, we amplify the problem. In your head, you feel like, oh, the world is going to end. No, it's not. Like, it's not, not such right. a big deal. Like, this thing is not as big as you're making it to be. So that is where talking to someone as a practical step, not just anybody. You cannot just grab somebody out of the street. You have to, like, look around you. Look around your community. Look around the, the, the resources you have. And these days, you know, the social, social media makes the world a global village. You're right there in India. I'm here in the United States. And here we are. We're having a chat. It's as if we are in the same room, right? So that's, that, um, that, uh, that's uh, at least an advantage because everything that has an advantage has a disadvantage, right? right? So an advantage is the access that this younger generation can have that some of us and even the older ones did not have when they were coming up. They did not have that access. But these days, you, if you are very intentional about it, you can find resources of support even outside your community. It doesn't necessarily have to be people you know directly with Zoom calls and chats and group chats. People connect and people support you. People listen to you. People try to help you to break down your thoughts so that you can manage the stress. And an important part to managing stress is also managing expectations. Yeah, It's very important for you to manage your, manage your expectations. Because if you are a kind of person that you just want to see the big picture all the time it's about the big picture oh i want to be the president i want to be the governor i want to be a minister i want to be this top shot and you're not asking yourself what does it take to achieve this you see people live in the cloud they are just living like they are not they are not they are just hanging out they are not kind of there's no foundation there's no rooted like mm. what is your journey what do you want to achieve first question what interests me what's my passion what is my why Right. Why do I wake up every day and get up of my get out of my bed and keep chasing life? It's very important. And that question, if you ask a hundred people, you can get hundred different answers. Right. What drives me does not necessarily drive you. And it doesn't mean that what drives me is better than what drives you. It just means that we are unique in our own way. So everybody has to go on that journey of self-reflection. You know, you get to know yourself. So you just have, have a conversation with yourself. Sometimes you just need to have coffee with yourself. Just call yourself on a meeting and say, yeah, let's talk. Like, you know, let's talk. What, what, what interests me? What, what is it? Why do I wake up? What is my, what is my purpose? Why, why am I struggling? Why am I going through life? What is it that excites me? So when you figure that out, then you begin to align that purpose with action. Because dreams are nothing except you back it up with action. Anybody can dream anything. You can dream to be the president of the United States, right? But right. the question is, what do you need to do to get to that point? That is the purposeful action. That is when you begin to ask yourself, okay, what do I need to do in order to achieve this thing that I'm trying to get to? What, what do I need to do? Is it just, you know, just dreaming it? I just have the wishful thinking. I just want to, right. I want to be this. I want to be that. So when you figure out what you need to do, then how do I get it? Now I know what I want. Now I know what drives me. I know my why. I know what my passion is. Then the next question is, how do I find out, um, how do I find those resources to support this goal so that I can begin to take the necessary actions to get to that point? Because right. action, action is key. It's not about motivation. Motivation is often overrated. Right. Motivation is nothing if you don't have discipline. Discipline is the critical thing. I can motivate you and get you hyped up but if you don't have the discipline to do, it's useless. Right. It's useless. Yeah. So that is where you have, yeah, you have people that believe in you and they push you up. But you also have to have that mental discipline that, yes, this is what I'm trying to achieve. There's no easy road. There's no shortcuts. That's another thing that adds to stress. People think, you know, there's a lot of uh, get quick rich scheme nowadays. When you go on YouTube, you go on Facebook, somebody is telling you, I will tell you how to make $2,000 in one hour. You will make $10,000 in 30 minutes. All of those things 
get people so psyched up and they begin to chase wild winds. People are just, they don't want to discipline themselves. There is no discipline to put in the work. There is no discipline to work. They just feel like there is a quick way for me to do this. I, I don't have to, I don't have to pay the price. I don't have to trust the process. I don't have right. to, you know, I, I, I should cut corners. I can, I can do it. I, you know, it's social media world. Everybody, I can come on social media and become a content creator. And that is all I'm going to do. And even in doing that, you see that people will not go through that pain of skilling up, upskill. Let me learn. How do I become better and better at what I'm doing? So um, those are some of the things that add to stress. And the way to manage that stress is understanding those things. Right. You have to understand those factors. Like you're stressed. Why are you stressed? I have my mentees and when they come to me and they talk to me and they complain, complain, I don't say anything. I let them talk. You talk, talk, talk. And then I ask you a simple question. Why are you stressed? Yeah. What can you identify the factors? What are the things that are stressing you? Because figuring out the problem is half the cure. If you don't know what your problem is, then you, you don't know how to solve it. Right. But when you figure out your problem, it's like, okay, now we are getting somewhere. Now we know what the problem is. Okay, this is what is stressing you. So how do we address it? So it becomes that it becomes different and unique for everybody. How do we address it? Is your stress that um, you are not making progress in in your academics? Okay, can we identify that maybe you are spending too much time on social media rather than spending time on studying? You see, you begin to identify problems because yeah. something something causes that stress. Or is your stress the fact that you are not making enough money? Okay, can we identify ways in which you can get jobs? so that you can support yourself better. Is, so what is adding to your stress? Is your stress the fact that you don't believe in yourself? Because this, this time, a lot of issues is the issue of self-identity. There's a lot of identity crisis now, especially with the younger generation. People, people don't know who they are. They don't know if they're a man or woman. They don't know if they want to be identified as a man. Right, uh, you know, a man you ma'am, uh, thank you. You have shared very constructive and very practical approaches uh, to manage stress. Right. So... I guess I guess view, uh, viewers will get very uh, constructive advice in regard of stress and public speaking. So it was a wonderful conversation with you. You have shared very important factors to think of to manage stress. Right. Thanks for being the part of our podcast. And this is it. And thank you so, so much to take out uh, your time from your busy schedule. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice talking to you. Yes. Thank you.